Welcome to Hope Talks Podcast with Grayson Willis and Pastor Margaret Michael, where you'll hear inspiring stories that are filled with hope and good news in Jesus Christ. You can also search for our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and TuneIn. We would love your feedback and invite you to take a short, anonymous survey. You can find the link to the survey in the show notes. Welcome to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. I'm Grayson Willis. Today's broadcast will be part two of a two-part testimony given by Nick Tucker. If you missed part one of Nick's testimony, you can go to our website, cotnaz.org, and click Watch, Listen, and click Hope Talks, and it was December 3rd program. We pray that today's broadcast is a half hour of hope for your life. May God bless. It's been a real joy uh, to get to know you and to really do ministry with you. And you help lead worship um, here on Monday nights um, for Celebrate Recovery. And that's been really cool. You've brought a different genre of music to worship. And I'll never forget the first night um, that you led. There was a couple came for, I think, New Jersey, and they were Celebrate Recovery leaders, Mm. and they were really coming for some respite. Um, Mm. They were staying at Mass Nutton, and they found the Celebrate Recovery they needed to be ministered to. And I'm like, this will be interesting. Like, it was an older couple, and I'm like, I wonder how this will impact them. Um, (laughs) What will be their response? And I looked over at one point, and she is worshiping. I mean, she is worshiping and just totally moved by the music wow. and like if that impacted her because I talked to her about it afterwards the powerful impact that that had on her recently there was a, a father and a daughter she was maybe 11 mm. and it was their first night wow. and you were worshiping and leading us and I was sitting at the table with them and just watching this young girl mm. just so into the worship and I don't know does she listen to rap? I don't know. Right. If she does or not. Right. But it was really beautiful. So talk to us a little bit about this area of ministry that yeah. you do. Mm-hmm. I know that you also talked about you go away for a couple months in the summer and minister. Um, yeah. But then you also are on Spotify. And, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, you're one of the people that I follow on Spotify. On. So Praise talk God. to us about yeah. how that came about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've always, um, I've always been around rap. I, um, yeah, I mean, I think that the musical influence that, you know, was around me in terms of, you know, my parents and, and, uh, you know, my grandparents, um, yeah, I got introduced to like a lot of like, like nineties R and B and, and, and rap and stuff like that. And I wasn't really deep into it. Cause you know, when my dad got saved, he was, he wasn't trying to like have me listen to, you know, a lot of secular music and mainstream music just because of what they talk about. Yeah. Um, but I will say like in the midst of me, like I really look back like, uh, seeing the way God was like speaking into my life before I knew it. Um, so I guess a lot of people can sometimes use Christian rap as just like a clean rap that they listen to and everything, like yeah. rather than, you know, bumping something that's you know saying something crazy. Um, but Christian rap kind of feel like these guys that like I'm listening to, they don't look like me. They're from different areas. You know, they like, like if you look at the way I grew up versus the way they grew up completely different, mm-hmm. But I'm like, but these dudes really just like they really ride out and rock out for Jesus, like on a different level. Like you could tell they really about this life, like from what they talk about in their music. I'm like, dang. But um, a lot of them, like I remember songs listening to um, a song called Sweet Victory by Trip Lee um, that I used to listen to um, back in um, back in high school and everything like just music, like the way that it has impacted me. I've always loved music. Um, Honestly, when I was around rap a lot, I would freestyle um, like just by myself, honestly, because like. You know, I know a lot of times with like, you know, certain dreams and, and goals and everything, like you don't really need people around you for you to pursue that thing. But mind you, I told you all about the, you know, the aspect of, you know, caring about what people think, wanting to just fit in, um, all this kind of stuff. I was so worried about all that, that like going out and doing something that was different from what was in my area mm-hmm. would have just been weird. Like for me, like I was like, I never thought to myself, oh, I should like try to be a rapper. <laughs> You know, I yeah. never, I never thought about that, but I would like freestyle on my own. I'd be in the car and I, I would see these like freestyles online and, and everything. And I, I'd be like, man, like, how do these dudes do it? I just go in the car and start like messing around, just like saying random stuff and working on my flow, working on, you know what I'm saying? My cadence and, you know, start trying to piece together punchlines, metaphors, similes, like all that kind of stuff. I would just, you know, throw them together. And, um, you know, it was an interesting journey of me just like kind of being like this closet rapper, <laughs> you know, in a sense. Yeah. 
And mind you, soccer was my main focus. Yeah. So I always listen to Christian rap. I love the impact that, you know, it's had on me and the way God was speaking through it. And a lot of people, you know, sometimes in the church, it's like rap gets a bad name, you know, and everything. And so yeah. folks would be like, nah, you know, rap's the devil or, you know, this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, like rap kind of kept me like kind of on the path low key you yeah. know what i'm saying like the christian rappers i was yeah. listening to kind of like convicted me when i would like listen to it and everything but i didn't know that was conviction at the time um but fast forward um you know basically being out of school my ultimate dream and goal was actually to play pro soccer but covid happened mm. right covid happened and uh at that point and covid was my senior year of college right okay. so like literally that's graduation like that's right then and there um and uh this is a piece of my story i didn't share but my mom's from finland um so um, and I've been over to visit Finland a bunch of times. I still have family over there. I speak Finnish because my mom taught me. So my goal was like, I'm going to go and live with my family over there. Oh, I'm wow. gonna, and I'm going to try out for pro teams while I'm over there. Like, I'm going to go work for my my family's uh, restaurant that they own. But I'm going to, like, you know, get my own apartment. I'm going to go try out for soccer teams and just make it happen. Just to say I did it. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to do that. So that doesn't happen. And so I'm just kind of sitting here. COVID, I begin an internship at the church. And uh, just, like, different things. Um, I got asked to do... Like, I don't know if, if people knew that I like did rap or poetry or like what it was, but people would ask me to do like um, like spoken word type stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Ask me to do spoken word, um, you know, little rap stuff here and there. And um, it was all kind of just like to the side. I, I didn't really focus on it. Um, but I remember, you know, always getting in the mix with freestyle and I would get in these little ciphers. You know, I would be around some people when they would throw a beat on. They would just like give me objects and say, rap about this object, rap about this. And uh, it would go in and then people would be like, man, like why don't you like do this? Like, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. still like, uh, like, who am I to be a rapper? Like, right. <laughs> you know, whatever. Like I'm still, you know, it, it just didn't make sense to me. Um, but then I remember fast forward 2022, I'm at a conference um, for our campus ministry. Mind you, I'm already out of school, but I'm kind of like volunteering, I guess, like helping out with the campus ministry. So I go, I'm like, this will be fun. Um, I go there and I remember my boy, he, uh, he makes beats. He was there and he had his laptop with him. I said, bro, why don't you play some of your beats? in the hotel lobby, like after like all the like sessions are done, play some beats on a speaker. Let's get some guys together. I knew some other dudes that rap. I was like, let's get some guys together and uh, yeah, let's freestyle. Like let's have a cypher like yeah. in the hotel lobby. Um, and we're rapping in there. And then this Christian rapper I actually listened to uh, was actually at the conference and everything. His name's Lazarus. Shout out Lazarus. Um, and Lazarus was in there and uh, we just start rapping like back and forth. Um, and mind you, I had like my little moment. I like rapped in the beginning. It was, you know, kind of crazy, but Lazarus, he'd been doing this for a lot longer, like in terms of actually like rapping, rapping. And so, you know, he, he went in and I was like, dang, like, that's cool. But it was like to be in that space and like, you know, kind of that mutual respect of like, um, you know, being able to rap with him. It was like, cool. Um, so at that point had that moment and like, everyone was like, yo, like you got music on Spotify, Apple music. I'm like, nah, I was like, I don't, I, I've never written a song. I've never structured a song. Um, about a month, a month and a half later, I'm at a coffee shop. Um, it's coffee hound in Harrisonburg. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there doing my quiet time. I'm reading, I'm praying. And I just heard the Lord say, write a song and everything. And I was like, uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but then he was like, write a song. I yeah. was like, okay. I was like, I don't know how to write a song. But I was like, but okay, I guess we can try this. Found this beat that my friend had sent me that he had told me like a month prior that he wanted me to write to. I just started writing a song and wrote a song called no longer a slave. And like, mm -hmm. you know, which was, you know, I'm no longer a slave. Yeah. So it was like taking that, but then put adding rap to it. So I did that. Um, and then from there, it was just like, just kind of exploded, honestly. Like, I think that as I wrote that first song, then I was like, man, I want to write some more. Like, you know, this feels natural. Like, this feels like something that I love to do. Did that. Now, some of my friends started popping out. They're like, just all of a sudden, they're like, we're rappers too. You know, so <laughs> And so I'm like, I'm finding out my friends got recording equipment and everything. I'm like, oh, snap. Like, this is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And so um, from that, like obedience of him telling me to write a song. I felt like from there, there was like just doors that were opening left and right. Yeah. Um, and so that was crazy. And then mind you, that was um, 2022. So that was the first year I went to the camp um, that I worked at. Mm -hmm. When I get there, the first dude that I meet is a rapper. So I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Yeah. Mind you, while, you know, maybe a week later after we have just had this conversation, um, the owner of the camp, um, his name's Timotheus Pope, shout out Pope. Um, he came up to us. We were freestyling at the table one day at the lunch table. And uh, he was like, hey, if y'all want to record something, I have a whole studio like set up. He's like, I can set it up for y'all in like one of the like the chair closets or something. And everything. I'm like, what is going on? Like I'm sitting here. I'm like, all right, Lord, like you told me to write a song. Now we're getting here and you, you just have doors busting wide open without me even having to 
ask. Mm -hmm. And so that summer we actually recorded a whole EP Mm -hmm. and everything. And I actually wrote songs and recorded songs that I have put out as singles. Like Mm -hmm. I think I recorded my song doubt there. I recorded a song called testimony there. Um, Record a song called Armor of God. And then we had that EP that we that we made um, called Community, which was really cool. So just stuff was just happening. So now up until this point, like I've, you know, kind of, you know, some people say, like, do the last thing God told you to do. If he hasn't told you different, do the last thing mm-hmm. um, in terms of that. And so he's, you know, he's told me to write a song and I've continued writing songs since. And so I've just been trying to be obedient in that. And um, it's really turned into, you know. Maybe before I was writing like just lyrics and everything, but now like I write with a purpose in terms of like um, some of my songs are more like, you know, what I'm saying tell a story. Some of them are like kind of like more worship. I, honestly, it's helped me like when I write certain songs, like um, those are moments I've been in the secret place with the father actually like talking to him when I say, you know, free me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm actually like, Lord, like I need help right now. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah. writing those lyrics. So understanding that when people hear that, yeah. they're. And that's yeah, kind of, you talked about early on, you go to church and you see people on their knees and you mm-hmm. see people raising their hands and yeah. you now understand that yeah. on this side, yeah. even to the desperation of wanting God to free you and using that avenue of yeah. how he's a gift he's given you to speak to the father and for others it gives them a way to come before the father and gives them words. It's powerful. Which that's more, when I hear yeah. that, that's more encouraging for me when I, when people tell me like that, then it is about like, Oh, you're a good rapper. Like right. I'm yeah. like more like what you said um, right. about folks that came to CR. Um, that's like the most encouraging thing for me is like understanding, like you can get your head really, you know, it can, your head can blow up thinking like, Oh, like, Oh, I can really rap. Like I can really, yeah. these, these folks see the, they see what, you know, what I'm about <laughs> and everything. But it's like, no, hearing people say that, no, like your song helped me get in the secret place with the father. Yeah. I'm like, that breaks me. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, cause, <laughs> cause I wrote it, me struggling in the secret place with the father. Right. Yeah. And like, if that helps you, like that's huge. And just shows me like God just confirming, wow, like this is like the ministry that, that you're kind of operating yeah. in right now. And so. it takes your story and what you've been through and, God takes our mess and makes it a message, right? Yeah. He, Come on now. He he used it in your life, but um, I, I said something last night in our life group that I don't think I've ever said before, and I don't know that I can get it verbatim the way it came out last night, but we were talking about how when we trust God with things, with hard things, and he takes us through those hard places, and we learn from that, and then... All of a sudden, we're walking with someone else, right? And they're wondering how we do it, or we say something that is encouraging to them. And we may not even realize, like you didn't until just now, Mm -hmm. right? But, you know, our life is supposed to produce fruit, right? And I had this visual last night as believers when we do this and someone else is moved and helped there's a spiritual fruit that they are receiving from obedience in our life yeah Yeah. that causes them to grow in their faith yeah i'd never seen it like that before just the things you see a fruit tree you know there's fruit hanging off of it and you can't see that in the spiritual aspect but when we let the brokenness shine through, or the light shine through the broken places in our life, right? And it becomes some light that illuminates someone else's darkness. Mm. That's powerful. Yeah. And the fact that he would use yeah. the likes of you and me, right? who we both have an addictive it's personality, or addictive nature. Right. I'm the same way. I have to be very careful with everything, yeah. let's just say. Yeah. Um, so even candy corn. <laughs> I took a picture one day. I was walking down the sidewalk candy and there was a piece of candy corn laying on the walk. And I took a picture and sent it to my kids and I said, I thought about it. You know, like I came back oh, later really? and it was covered by ants. That's I'm hilarious. like, thank you, Lord. Wow. Like, you know, like, and I'll eat the whole bag so I don't have to eat it tomorrow. Candy corn's a silent killer. 
one, so one candy corn at a time. You um, mentioned that you've done some freestyle in Nick and that you've written a couple songs. Would you like to share some of that with us today? Oh, you want me to? Oh, yeah. snap. It's on the spot. That's up to you. It's up to you. I, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Well, look, I'm on the podcast with Grayson and Pastor Margaret. Got that water. You know that I'm just walking with Christ. I got my father. It's different because you know that he chose us, his sons and daughters. I'm doing this with him. I'm really be going farther. I'm talking about the fact that he really took me a distance. It's really crazy. I was blind, and then he gave me the vision. The devil comes in, and then he tried to cause the vision. It's different. God, the surgeon, man, he's going to make incisions. Every day I read the word, uh, help me make decisions. I could feel this, man. He freed me from my prison. Look at this. I'm telling that I hope that the people listen. Different when that Holy Spirit in me, uh, like a diamond, I'm a glisten. Different because the God, uh, 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 Jesus really rose on the third day. He is risen. Yeah, that's about all I got right now. I, was, hey, I got a little, that got a little something, really something. Good. That's really that's good. That's a little something, something. That's really <laughs> good. good. So what are you doing now? Like, what are the things? You're involved in campus ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Like how God is using you in this season of your life? Yeah. Um, so my role, I feel like is going to, um, change a little bit in terms of, I think I'm gonna get like more involved. I've been just kind of around, um, you know, walk with some of the guys, you know, and everything in the campus ministry. Um, but like, I don't have like a specific role, you know, in there. I've just been kind of like around, you know, um, you know, I feel like I've always still been drawn, you know, to campus ministry. Um, so I'm doing that. Um, I serve, you know, at my church and everything, um, as armor bearer, um, help out with the music sometimes, you know, if there's like a rap thing that they, yeah. you know, they want to do. Um, so that's been cool. But yeah, so those are like my main, my main things I'm involved in. Outside of that, I do freelance uh, videography and photography. Um, and I Uber right now and yeah, and then I do the music stuff. So, you know, that stuff is just kind of, you know, sporadically I've been, you know, trying to plan some concerts. I've already done a couple concerts, but, um, plan some concerts and, you know, ministry events, uh, yeah. that we can, that we can do. So, but that's my main thing is like just being involved. And I also help out with the youth ministry at our church. Okay. Um, and so I'm one of the leaders with the youth ministry. So that one I'm actually like more involved in. Like, you know, I'm really like have a, have a role. Um, we're trying to get that uh, youth ministry going and um, really reach these high school students. So that's really cool. So I see you as a very outgoing mm-hmm. person. Like if you're in the mm-hmm. room, like the room lights up, like you have this presence that you may not even know that you have, but when you enter a room, you're going to be encouraging people. Mm. You're going to, like, you just don't know how, maybe you do know, but it's Mm. amazing when you walk in a room, uh, the encouragement that you bring. So I'm wondering, how do you go from almost a wallflower, right? Like, just not wanting any attention. How did you go from that to this outgoing young man, yeah. how'd that happen? Um, I think honestly, just like, yeah, for me, I think after dealing with a lot of just the self image, self perception, and just like this constant anxiety of like, you know, fear of, I don't know, embarrassment, messing up. I don't know in front of people. I don't know yeah. what it, I don't know like where it all stemmed from. You know, I feel like, um, yeah, I felt like I had a pretty good, you know, setup in terms of, you know, my life, my family, you know, um, and, and my friends, but I think that honestly, I was always, and this might just be in general, honestly, I feel like other students were probably the same way. Um, but everyone is just trying to kind of fit in. Like, mm-hmm. I think that there was an aspect that like, I was just scared to be me, mm-hmm. you know, I was scared to be me. Like all this stuff, like that I am, um, was happening behind closed doors. Like the way that I interact, like with my sister, the way that I interacted, you know, with my family members, um, you know, with my grandparents, like I've always been like a dancer. Like I've always been kind of out there. Like Mm -hmm. I'm always goofy, Mm -hmm. um, and everything. And I think that it just took me like coming out, like, I don't know, like stop wearing this like mask or this show. Mm -hmm. Um, and like realizing that like, you're not truly going to know who, you know, you're not truly going to know like who loves you and who doesn't, if you don't put yourself, you know, out there, like find, like to really find your people, And everything. And so I just felt like over time, I started like not caring as much about, you know, these other, you know, these other opinions or, or whatever it was like that I was thought or these assumptions that I had that people thought about me. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I mean, honestly, the biggest thing is probably God freeing me from these like me. You starting to follow Jesus. I was really like, 
he was really showing me like, yo, this is your, this is like part of your identity of how I made yeah, you. Like, yeah. like realizing I was wired a certain way. Like, right. Yeah. So That's for so me, important. so for me to like tone it down or turn my volume mm-hmm. down a little bit and everything was kind of disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Like right. to how we God, are who we are, right? To, how <laughs> God has created me. And so yeah. I feel like over time I was like, man, I just started putting myself out there more and, um, you know, just not caring as much, like putting myself in situations where hey, maybe I did feel anxiety or, or whatever, but like facing it head on mm-hmm. and everything where it's like, Hey, like, you know, honestly, even um, leading worship um, for CR is kind of like, it's kind of nerve wracking, you know, a lot of times. But um, honestly, I feel like the Lord just keeps me nervous because I feel like if I wasn't, you know, everything that I might, you know, might be on, yeah. Yeah, I might like almost rely, you know, I think can that I can rely things. on my, rely yeah. on myself, you know, everything. So yeah. Um, yeah, there's still the aspect there. And I think that being in that space, um, I've like learned that, like, okay, let's say I say something funny. To me, it's funny. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. other people don't find it funny. I'm like, that joke was still funny to me. So like yeah, right. finding this like aspect of like, yo, I'm like not like a stand up comedian. I'm not trying to find people's approval in my, in like their All laughter right. or, um, or trying to find like, if I say something, um, you know, really cool. And they're like, wow, that's really cool. Like stuff that's cool to me, stuff that's funny to me, that like, it's going to be funny to me. It's going to be cool to me, you know, and that's everything. Right. Yeah. And that's just how it is, you know, and everything. Yeah. And, uh, I feel like from that aspect, when I started getting free from that, like I could just operate on a more free flowing level, like around people. And I've always loved people. Like I've always loved getting to know people. I love like hearing people's stories and, and being around various cultures too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just because of my family, like my uncle's like, he's, he's Italian, you know, my, um, you know, my family from Finland. So like, I love getting to know people. I'm like, man, if I stay in the show, I'm not gonna, I'm not sure. going to get to know people. I'm just going to be stuck sure. like in my room, um, yeah. honestly. And so yeah, it's just been a journey. I can't really pinpoint like one moment that I like started to come out my show, but I think just over time, I just gained more confidence in myself yeah. Yeah. and who I am and be- became more secure in myself yeah. and who I am. And so, yeah, now I just be having fun. Like I just be out here just. we yeah, And it is. it is. I like, think if there's people listening today that really struggle with that, like really coming to understand how God created us. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and making sure that our identity is in him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that's the beautiful thing of your story is, you know, who you are in Christ and that has made all the difference. Like we have this God shaped void in our life that we try to fill with all types of things and nothing will fill it, um, to where we are satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. Only God can do that, um, through Christ and by the power of his spirit. And so I, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Nick, uh, just kind of in the last few minutes that we have today, um, what else would you like to share about your story or your testimony that we haven't asked you already or that you haven't shared already? And also, um, after you answer that, kind of since we had you share about your rapping and singing and you mentioned you're on Spotify, how can people find you on Spotify if they wanted to look you up? Yeah. Um, I think honestly that's that's pretty much the main I. I talk a lot, so I'm pretty long winded. So <laughs> I think I've pretty much shared everything yeah, that that's you good. know yeah, that's uh, awesome. I've needed yeah. to share. So that's good. Um, but yeah, so you know, nowadays I've, I've been working on uh, you know some music. I actually have an album coming out next month. Um, the goal date to have it out is November fifteenth. Um, and it's called Dear Appa. Um, so talking about um basically letters to um to the Father to you right. know to God and um that'll be coming out soon. But um, for people that you know want to find uh, the music, um, I'm on all platforms. Okay. So if you look up my name, it's N I K, no C because I leave that to Christ. Space <laughs> Tucker. So Nick Tucker okay. with a period at the end, all lowercase. Um, so yeah, N I K space Tucker with a period. Okay. If you look up, I'll be pretty much on anything. I'm on YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever, okay. whatever you're looking for. If you just want to go on YouTube, okay. you can actually find my music too. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can check it out. And since we call this program Hope Talks, and I know you've shared a lot, maybe you've mentioned this already, but what right now is giving you the most hope in your life? I think the thing that gives me the most hope, or that I hope encourages other people to have hope, um, is that like you said, Pastor Margaret, like we're like undeserving vessels being used for God's glory. And I think that looking back, like right now, I think this has helped me reflect a lot on everything in my testimony that technically should have disqualified me from not only being, you know, from, from not only like doing the Lord's work, but being just a son. Um, I think the fact that I can sit here today and say confidently, you know, what I'm saying that um, that I know that I'm free, that I'm I'm saved, um, that uh, that God loves me, that he knows me 
and everything. And that the fact that I get to be used for his glory, I think that like gives me a lot of hope to where it's like, wow, like God, if you can use like my story and my mess and use it for a message now that impacts people in this way, um, I'm like, man, like there's no reason that I should be able to be in this position. Um, and so I think if anything, uh, I just want to encourage people that are maybe listening. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you've been through, um, who you think you are, who others have said that you are, um, know that God has, has chosen you. He has set you apart uh, to be a royal priesthood that you're fearfully and wonderfully made and that he has uh, specifically crafted a purpose that you are meant to walk out. Um, and I hope that God helps um, reveal that to you of what that looks like and that you um, gain confidence in who you are in him and that you uh, know the Father deeper. So yeah. that's my encouragement is that it um, doesn't matter uh, what you've experienced, um, what you think that disqualified you, uh, but God has qualified you because he has called you son or daughter uh, before you could even, you know, right. even attempt to give yourself that title. That's so, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. It's a good word. Well, Nick, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I hadn't really heard all of your story. Um, mm. You know, we have men's groups and women's groups, and so we don't yeah. always um, hear the stories that are shared um, uh, with our open shares. But I just felt like I wanted you to come in. I've watched you grow and uh, just from being a college student, you know, until now you're out here doing this thing and God's yeah. opening doors. And I just, I'm so grateful. Like even the part of you have music that's coming out this month, you know, here it is. You've put this music out and now people can go right there and listen to that. And yeah. God does things for us that we have never thought of, um, ask or imagined, and he will continue to do that for us. Yeah and those that are listening today. Yeah. So thank you for being here and Absolutely. for just being yeah. um, open to what God has for you. And, again, just pray God's best over you yeah. as you continue to walk in the path that he has for you. Yeah. I appreciate it, y'all. It's been a yep. pleasure. Yep. Yeah. Thanks uh, for joining us, Nick. It's been great to hear your testimony. Uh, definitely brought hope to my life. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. We pray that, as you've heard, uh, Nick... Tucker's testimony today that it truly has been a half hour of hope for your life. May God bless. I've come a long way. It's only by your grace, Lord. It's only by your mercy. I can say I've come a long way. I'm trying to run this race, Lord. This world has tried to curse me. I can say I've come a long way. It's only by your grace, Lord. It's only by your mercy I can say I've come a long way. I'm trying to run this race, Lord. This world has tried to curse me. I can say I've come a long way. Wrote the song because I've been tripping lately. Finally back and I've been missing daily. I was moving forward, but I listened to these little lies. Saying how my prison waiting. I'm trying to live daily in grace, but follow my face. I just got to go in patience. Lord, come heal my mind and help me a body and work. I still have my struggles. I got to return to your feet every day. It's hard to go pick up my cross when I'm lost in my thoughts. And my flesh always gets in the way. This time I was down on my back. I thought I was done, but you came in my life and I'm saved. I'm crying to you when I struggle to walk in this road because I know that the rock is who paid it. Got me walking on this lonely road Hard to stand straight when all my thoughts are going blow for blow Drunk on these desires, see the apple on the tree, it grows Same mistake as Adam, I'm a human and it really shows I've come a long way It's only by your grace, Lord It's only by your mercy I can say I've come a long way I'm trying to run this race, Lord This world has tried to curse me I can say I've come a long way It's only by your grace, Lord It's only by your mercy I can say I've come a long way Trying to run this race, Lord, this world has tried to curse me, I can say I've come a long All the things way. I've been through, all the things I had to heal from, now my past in rear view, to my giant sound, I ain't gotta fear none, look back and you can see the journey, crazy that we done came this far, I'm amazed at this and how you gave me mercy, met the sun and now reach the stars, the kingdom hit to call me Albert Pujols, I'm walking with you and I'm standing on base, got my eyes on the prize and I'm running to you, cause my home was in heaven, I stand in place, so please help me, Lord, when I ain't feeling worth it, so many days when I was feeling worthless, I was just stuck in my head and was stuck in my bed, and I struggled to give you worship, but I'm back now and I can run to you, I'm a total the sword and not a gun or two. I'm adopted by your grace. I'm your little baby. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm giving you all of my praise for all of my days while I'm on these ones and twos. On the third day, you were raising all these demons crushed up under you. Way. It's only by your grace, Lord. It's only by your mercy. I can say I've come a long way. I'm trying to run this race, Lord. This world has tried to curse me. I can say I've come a long way. It's only by your grace, Lord. It's only by your mercy. I can say I've come a long way. 
Please, Lord, this world has tried to curse me. I can say I've come a long way. Hope Talks is sponsored by Church of the Nazarene Harrisonburg in partnership with Sunshine Ministries. Thanks for listening to today's podcast of Hope Talks. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe for updates and the latest episodes. Also, if you're in the Harrisonburg, Rockingham County area, we invite you to listen on the radio each Sunday at noon on 1470 AM or 102.1 FM WBTX.